What do you mean you don't have any more information? I'm sorry, Mrs. Swift. There aren't any new notations on your son's chart. Not since you last called. Aren't you taking care of my son? Of course we are. Jamie's getting constant attention. Look, I know what happens. You've probably spent the whole afternoon looking around for some intern to take you out on Saturday night. Mrs. Swift. <clears throat> if you can, why don't you call back in about a half an hour? Don't you dare put me off. I want to know right now how my son is. Dr. Santa should be in any minute. I'm sure she will have examined Jamie by then and hopefully we'll have some news for you. Thanks a lot for nothing. Please. Report to emergency. Doctor Devine, report to emergency. Hi. I wonder if I... Oh, one more. Logan, how are you? Oh, hi, Miles. You know anything about Jamie? Oh, I'm kind of a stranger here in pediatrics. I just came by to see if I could get a look at his chart. Oh. I was up at April's. I got a call from Dr. Santos. She wanted me to come back to the hospital. Said that Jamie was in some kind of crisis. Oh, I see. She let me in to see him, though. He's lying there. He's listless. You, you know how a fever affects a, a baby. They'll... I had funniest feeling. He was, he was looking at me, and I, I felt like he was saying, do something, Dad. Help me. Probably just going a little stir crazy, you know. The waiting, I think the waiting is getting too me. Logan, I tell you what, why don't you go down to the cafeteria, huh? Get something to eat. I'll come down for you as soon as Dr. Santos examines Jamie. No, I can't do that. I, I can't leave again until I know that Jamie's going to make it through all this. Well, there's no knowing how long it's going to take before the crisis passes. Well, it better not be too much longer. I don't think I can take much more of this. Well, now, look, worrying yourself sick isn't going to help Jamie. Oh, well. Probably right there, but... You know, you're just Nurse more Edward, used to this than I am. Well, I'm not used to Nurse it. I'm just Edward, exposed to it more, that's all. The day I get used to it, I probably won't be much of a doctor. Hope Dr. Santos feels the same way. I know she does. She's doing all she can. Please, God, let it be enough. And you know, we sometimes say that time is on the side of the patient, especially in cases like this, Logan. Thanks, Miles. I know what you're doing. I, what you're trying to do anyway. I appreciate it. I owe you some thanks for uh, taking April out to Oakdale this afternoon. How'd that go? Yeah, it was all right. It's just very hard for her to set foot in the door, besides from that. I was a little worried she'd uh, maybe not even get that far. No, well, she did it. I think having Julia there with her, I think that was Dr. very useful, Levin, very helpful. Yeah. Cardiac care unit. A little worried about leaving her as quickly as I did, though. See, I have this feeling that when she's not occupied fully with Julia, then that house is going to seem terribly empty to her. I'm sure it will. I'd have stayed longer, you know. I got this call from Dr. Santos to come back. I told you that already, didn't I? I'm repeating myself. It's all right. Now, Nicole and I are going out to see April later today. But then, of course, we're going to have to leave her alone eventually, too. Yeah. That's something April's not going to be able to escape for a while. Being alone. Yes, Mr. Porter, I know how much you appreciate the opportunity. We'll see you tonight, then. Goodbye. There we are. It's all set. Thank you. From Harrison Porter's voice, I would say that you have just made a friend for life. It's awfully nice of you to allow him to substitute for me tonight. Nicole, as far as I'm concerned, your plans for this evening have a very high priority. Mm. Well, Miles and I both think it's essential that somebody be with April tonight. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And uh, I guess I'm ready. I'm going to go over to the hospital now and pick him up. We're going to drive out there together. 
April's first day home with her new baby. It should have been such a joyous occasion. I know, I know. But we're going to do everything we can to help her get through it. It's her first night there that will be the most difficult for her. I don't know how she's going to do it. Well, Nicole, if April is going to recover from this tragedy, then she's going to have to prove to herself that she can live and function in that household. Frankly, Geraldine, I have half a mind to go out there and to tell her to pack her bags and take her back to my place. Why? Well, I just think she's taking on too much too soon. Well, she has to run her own life sometime. Well, at least I wish she wouldn't be so stubborn about not hiring a baby nurse. I don't think she really realizes how much of a handful that little girl is going to be. Well, I don't know. I have an idea that right now April feels that that child is the only thing she has in this world. So naturally, she's going to focus a lot of her attention on that baby. And for now, I think it could have a very positive effect. And then I am worried about the fact that she's living so far away from all the rest of us. Well, that's unfortunate, of course. I mean, I don't know. I, she could have a problem with Julia that she doesn't know how to handle. Well, we hope that doesn't happen, but if it does, there's always the telephone. Now, Nicole, don't be so worried. <laughs> somehow, somehow we women seem to survive being widowed. And I have no doubt that April is going to survive, too. Geraldine Saxon. Well, oh, hello, Raven. This is a pretty classy joint for cops, isn't it? I told you I didn't like the looks of the crowd around here. Mm, it'll look a lot better as soon as you all leave. Uh, we'd invite you to sit down, but I don't think there's enough room at this table. You know, I really give you credit for guts. I'm surprised you have the nerve to look me in the eye. What in the world are you talking about? Don't you feel a little guilty? Raven, if you've got something to say, say it. I just want to know if you feel satisfied that your babysitting efforts may cost my son his life. My son is in the hospital fighting for his life, and it is your fault. You have a hell of a nerve making that kind of an accusation. How in the world did a dumb idea like that get in your head? Because it's true, and you know it. For your information, Raven, nothing we did caused Jamie's illness. Yeah, if you had bothered to talk to his pediatrician, she would have told you that there's some sort of bug going around. There are a lot of kids that are sick right now. As a matter of fact, Dr. Santos seems to think that there's an epidemic in Monticello. You are responsible. So how do you figure that? Because any real baby nurse would have recognized the symptoms right away and oh. stopped the virus before it developed into anything other than a cold. Raven, there is nothing and no one who could have done anything to stop Jamie's getting sick. Since when are you an MD detective? Raven... We took very good care of Jamie. He would have been much better off with Attila the Hunt. As soon as Jamie is well and Logan wants us to, we're going to pick up where we left off. Over my dead body. Well, talk about incentive for going back to work. You know, Raven, you should be the last person to complain about Logan's choice of babysitters. The only reason Logan wanted us to keep an eye on Jamie is because you keep trying to kidnap him. You guys always have an answer, don't you? We are just doing our job. Well, you know less about the law than you do about taking care of children. Is that so, Mommy dearest? Yes. You cannot kidnap your own child. And no matter what Logan says, he has no legal rights to Jamie. I have legal rights, and I deserve to keep him. You tell it to the judge. I will, and I'll get him back. And when I do, nobody, not you, nor the entire police force of Monticello, will take him away from me. Do you All understand? Right, okay, Raven. Why don't you just cool it? We're in a public place. Yeah, look, um, we just came to have a nice, quiet dinner, and you were having a drink, so why don't we just calm You don't want again? me to continue because you know I'm right. Look, I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt, Mrs. Swift. I assume this scene you're creating is because of your concern about Jamie's illness. You bet it is. Raven, we all want Jamie to get better. If my son dies, God forbid, I'm going to hold you personally responsible. Look, why don't we just You had truth, no huh? right to accept a job that you had no qualifications for. I have given Jamie more affection in the last two weeks than you have since the day he was born. You must have been careless. You know nothing about taking care of a baby. The only thing you know how to do is handle guns and police officers. Ladies, I could make a please. better mother than you could any day. Oh, don't make me laugh. Let's face it, Deborah. You have about as much femininity as one of the Pittsburgh Steelers.
when did it change? Oh. Oh, please, can't you give me more information than that? It... Yes, I, I, I understand. I know. I understand. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Hi, Dorothy. Hello. Well, I've had more enthusiastic greetings in my time. Something come out? I was just on the phone, Monticello General, to check on Jamie's condition. How is he? Not good. He's taken a turn for the worst. Now he's on the critical list. No wonder you're upset. Oh, he's just a little baby. He shouldn't be that sick. Yeah. Logan must be going through hell right now. Yeah. Nancy, I'm sure the doctors are doing everything they can. Yes, I know. I they. You're right. It's... Oh, dear. What news for a husband come home from a long day's work? Hmm? <laughs> there are two breadwinners in this family, you know. And uh, you didn't exactly sit home clipping coupons today, did you? No. Honey, what would you think if we rearranged this furniture? I really would like to. Okay with me. Uh, hey, how come uh, you usually do your exercises in the morning? I know. I didn't have time this morning, though. Oh. Listen, tell me, please. How was Cliff's first full day as a new member of the firm? Well, it'll, uh, it'll be a while until I get used to uh, anyone other than Draper in that office. But I don't think I'm going to regret bringing Cliff into the firm. Yeah? Is he all settled in? In no time at all, he had uh, the office looking uh, very lived in. I stopped by at lunchtime, my goodness, it looked as though it had been hit by a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he hasn't tripped over or uh, broken any furniture <laughs> so far. It's very good, honey, that you have an associate help take the, uh, the burden of the workload off you. Yeah, and to Cliff's credit, he volunteered to stay late tonight to uh, go over some of the more urgent cases that kind of got lost in the shuffle. Yeah, it's good to know he's as conscientious as Logan said he is. As a matter of fact, he'll probably be calling tonight. I told him if he had any problems, just to give me a ring. Oh, fine, good. Okay. Oh, uh, well, then maybe I ought to try Kelly again so that the line would be open. You still haven't been able to reach your nephew? No, 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 no. I tried all afternoon and he just wasn't in. Well, this should be a good time. He ought to be in now. We shall soon find out. We can have dinner after this call. Okay. Hello? Yes. Uh, please, I would like uh, Mr. Kelly Pollock in room 704. Yes, Pollock. Well, uh, would you ring the room anyway, please? She said that isn't the name of the person in 704. Have we been calling the wrong room? Well... Hello? Kelly? Speaking? Kelly, uh, hello. This is, uh, this is Nancy Carr, your aunt in, in Monticello. Hey, <laughs> Nancy, hi. Oh, well, my goodness, you are a difficult person to reach. I've been trying all day. <laughs> well, I was out bright and early trying to take in all the sights. Hey, New York is quite a town. Ah, uh, listen, your mom and dad wanted me to call you there and find out if everything's okay. Oh, just fine. And I'm really looking forward to meeting you and Uncle Mike. Well, I was going to say I was looking forward to a wonderful family reunion, but I don't know if we can say that since we haven't met. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel as if I've known you. I mean, ever since I was a little kid, all I've heard are nice things about you. Oh, that's nice. Would you like to talk to your Uncle Mike? Hey, please, put him on. Right. Hello, Kelly. How are you? Hi, Uncle Mike. Thrilled to be talking to you after all these years. Well, Nancy and I are looking forward to uh, saying hello to you in person. I understand that you're going to be joining some Monticello. Uh, yeah, as much as I like it here in New York. Think for the kind of work I do that I'd be over my head here. Monticello's going to be a good place for us to start out. Well, your father told us that you had an unusual talent, but he didn't provide any details. <laughs> well, I think it'll be best if I show you when I get there. When's that going to be? Day after tomorrow, if I have my date straight. Well, as soon as you know your arrival time, let us know, because uh, we'll pick you up at the airport. Hey, that's terrific. Now I'm going to turn you back to Nancy. Hold on. Oh, it's so good to have a chance to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to talk to you, too. Hey, and listen, Aunt Nancy, thanks again for letting me stay with you for a while. 
Please, it's our pleasure. My goodness, we're very happy that you will be here. After all, you're family. Oh, um... Uh, uh, Kelly, uh, I was wondering, uh, the hotel operator uh, didn't seem to know your name when I asked for Kelly Pollock. Well, that's because I'm not using that name, Aunt Nancy. I hope you don't mind. Oh, uh, uh, what, what name are you using? I'm going by my mother's maiden name. It sounds a little better. Ah, so you're Kelly McGrath. Yeah. That's my stage name, I guess. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, well, um, Kelly, it's wonderful to talk to you, and we're really looking forward to seeing you. And uh, be sure to let us know when you're arriving, all right? All right. All right, dear. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Why McGrath? He says that that's his stage name. Well, little fellow, in a couple days we'll be with Aunt Nancy and Uncle Mike in Monticello. Where is Monticello? Only a plane right away. Do you think they'll like me? Hey, of course, little fellow. They're gonna like you. Aunt Nancy said we're family. What else could you ask for? Well? Hey, besides you're cute. And? And what? And lovable. tickets for the ball game this weekend. He makes me miss it. I'll never forgive him. <laughs> You'll be there for every pitch, both of you. There you are. Hello, sweetheart. I told you, told me that you might be in pediatrics. No. Miles has been holding my hand, making the waiting a little more bearable. How's Jamie? Last word wasn't too encouraging, but... Oh, I'm sorry. Dr. Sandals is in with it now. Listen, if you want to stay here, I can drive out and see April by myself. No, no, no. I'm not going to hear that. If you've got plans to be with April, you go ahead. Well, I yeah, I told you. We just thought it might be a little easier on April if she weren't alone tonight. Especially. Absolutely. She was very anxious this afternoon. I'm sure she'd be very happy to have your company. Well, we're going to stay with her as long as we can, but I think the real test is going to come when she turns out the light, tries to get some sleep. Yeah. Well, I wish I could go back there with you. I'll tell you what, we'll send her your regards. Do. Listen, when you do get some information about Jamie, give us a call. I think good news will make April feel better. I'll call the minute I know anything, one way or the other. Mr. Swift. Dr. Sanders, what's happening with Jamie? The fever has finally broken. The little boy's going to be fine. Jamie's going to be fine. He's going to be all right. <laughs> He's... What did I tell you, Logan? Yeah. It's wonderful. <laughs> Barring any unforeseen complications, he'll be back to himself in a few little time. Well, thank God, and thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you. So what what uh, finally turned the tide? I switched antibiotics. I gave Jamie a drug I sell no use on infants. And uh, it really did the trick, but uh, I had no other choice. Well, it worked. Yes, it did. <laughs> yes, the fever's down to just a few degrees uh, above normal. The infection is eradicated. <laughs> would you like to see the little boy? Oh, would I? Well, please. Thank you so much. Excuse me. Hello, this is Raven Swift. I'm calling about my son again. Hello, Mrs. Swift. Hello, do you have any new word on his condition or have you managed to lose the files altogether? <laughs> Your son's physician happens to be right here. I'll let you speak to Dr. Santos. Just a minute. Excuse me, Dr. Santos. You have a phone call. This is Dr. Santos. Hello, doctor. This is Raven Swift. I'm very, very worried about my son, and no one seems willing to tell me how he is. Oh, I can tell you, Mrs. Swift. He's just doing fine. He is? Yes, I was talking to your husband, and uh, 
you know, the um, crisis is past. The fever has broken down a little while ago. And I'm just going to be fine. I am so relieved to hear that. Well, I'm glad to be the bearer of good news. Thank you, thank you. You don't know how much this means to me, to know that he's well again. Uh, he's on his way to recovery. Um, if you want, you can come and visit him anytime. Well, thank you. I'll come as soon as I can. I have one more question, though. Yes, of course. Do you know how long it will be until he's well enough to come home? Um, I'd be willing to release him in 24 hours or so, as long as I know that there's somebody at home that'll take good care of him. Of course. The hospital is no place for a little baby. He belongs with his mother. <laughs> Great. So, um... I'll pick him up as soon as you say it's okay. And thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye, doctor. Goodbye.